Now let's see some other use cases for database proxies, because uh, there are many. First, let's start with scalability and performance too. We already saw read-write splitting, we saw load balancing, the database proxy can do all this too automatically for you. There is something called causal read, so when you write uh, data, it goes to, say, the primary, and it could take a, a instant, right, to get replicated in the other node. So maybe you run an insert and then you at the same time read almost at the, at the same time, but after the write, you read from the replica, but the replication process hasn't, it's not done yet for that, for that uh, row. So you might get wrong results, right? Causal reads, you enable this. There are several options, mechanisms, or ways of the for this to be configured that I'm pretty sure that you will find the one that matches you. So you compromise basically a bit on uh, on on the delay of the of the of the query. But there are several options there, so it's very easy to find uh, the one that fits perfectly your use case, your application. Caching. You can cache the results. So you run a query, your application runs a query and it's running it all the time and data doesn't change, for example. That's a good um, mm -mm, candidate for caching that query. So we cache the results. We just configure it there. We create a filter. The module is called cache. You can configure a bunch of things there. Done. It doesn't need to go to the actual database nodes to return the result so it gets uh, faster. On the high availability front, we have automatic failover that we saw it, right? When a primary node fails, another one gets promoted as a new primary. That's configured somewhere in the uh, GUI here. Just say auto failover, true, done. Then, then uh, MariaDB max scale can, can do automatic failover for you. And the other one is auto rejoin. So when the failing, the, the server, the, the server, the node that failed is available again, gets detected and it rejoins automatically and it's configured accordingly, right? That's also something you can configure there just by setting this flag to true. Transaction replay, this is closely related. So for example, when uh, the primary failed in the previous example, it will, it would return an error that you have to catch in your code. You have to handle that error. Maybe there is a try-catch block if you're using one of those languages with this construct. Uh, you will have to handle the error somehow and then retry. Like, put a loop there, like five times, for example, and try if after five, then, okay, we show the error. There is nothing we can do. But but maybe, you know, at some point, Max scale is able to reconfigure everything and now you can run the transaction somewhere else and it doesn't fail, right? So the application doesn't need to uh to to handle this you can remove that code if you have it or you can just not waste time <laughs> coding that part uh which is pretty amazing uh this is very 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 um useful for developers uh, i would say on the integrations part i want to show you this so change data capture which is kind of sending the changes in database data and schema somewhere else and it's usually the industry standard almost is uh, Kafka. You send it to Kafka, right? To a queue. Uh, usually, like I said, Kafka. So this is this means exporting to Kafka the events in the database. You export those to Kafka, and then from there you can do whatever you want to to do, whatever you can do with with Kafka. You can do after that. Really powerful feature, automatically from. You know, the database, no need to implement anything or add dependencies or anything extra if you already have the proxy, obviously. And the opposite, you can ingest data. So data ingestion through Kafka. So um, you kind of receive these, these changes and do whatever you want to do. Like, for example, you can write to column store for fast analytics, this kind of stuff. Um, so it's importing, exporting to Kafka. You can do it from, from RADB, max scale. The NoSQL protocol, it's pretty cool too. So here in, in the screenshot here, I'm creating a new listener. Remember the listener was uh, the what what the application used kind of to connect to the database and it has a port and all these and a, and a protocol. Well, there are several protocols. So it's Kafka and then you have MariaDB and, but you also have NoSQL. 
in this case MongoDB. Uh, that means that if you have this scenario here, you have a web application. Yeah, I, I, I'm showing here like if it's Java, but it could be anything. And you implement that application using, you connect that application to MongoDB. Then you add the dependency there. In the case of Java, that's not JDBC. That'll be another extra library there. And you probably use MongoDB query language instead of SQL or SQL. You can send those queries, the connections, to Maxiscale because Maxiscale is an intelligent proxy. It also understands uh, MongoDB query language, MQL, and it can translate that to SQL and store the data in a MariaDB database or cluster. So you have this data in a relational database now. So from NoSQL to SQL, you need to modify the application. The application to totally, totally thinks it's talking to a MongoDB database. It doesn't know. Um, then you can use that data. It's stored, by the way, in the in the MariaDB database. It, this is stored as a JSON document, right? And there are JSON functions, um, which you can which you can use to manipulate this data or transform it in a you know to like a table kind of thing, and then do joins. So you can select from what got inserted from like in a MongoDB kind of way, a, a JSON document, join that data with relational data that you have maybe from other applications. So that's pretty powerful. Mm, and that's the NoSQL protocol. Now on the security front, we have things such as the query log. So you can query all, sorry, you can log all the queries uh, automatically there. You can uh, define a query limit. This is called uh, throttle filter, right? So it's a filter, and you say how how many uh, queries can somebody run in certain period of time to avoid certain kind of security attacks, right? For example, denial of service and, and, and this kind of stuff. Same with result limit. Now it's just you are limiting uh, the number of rows that get returned to the client. Uh, again could be um, for increasing security. So when you do a select and you forget to put some kind of filter where close there, then um, you don't accidentally return 1 billion rows or something like that. You probably, it's not what you want. Um, data masking, this is something that, well, you define there a masking, you define a JSON object with a, an expression that it's kind of a regular expression to transform the data, and then that gets returned to the client. And that's very explained with a with a, a screenshot of an actual application that an example application that I implemented. It's a CRUD, so it's create, read, update, and delete. It's running on the browser and it's connecting to MariaDB. Uh, it's just information about people, right? So I have four four guys here, and this is coming from this SQL query: select all from a person, which by the way, I didn't put a where there. So if there I have 1 billion rows, it's going to return 1 billion rows. But since I was using max scale, then I could add this uh, uh, result limit and that's fine. It's not going to impact the database and potentially other applications that are using the database. Anyway, so uh, this is not the important thing or what I wanted to talk about here in this screen screenshot is this column here credit card number, which is very sensitive information. Applications shouldn't be able to see those numbers. Well, I created a masking rule somewhere there in the max scale that changes all the characters except the last four digits of the credit card number with, uh, with a star, right? And I didn't, for sure, I didn't implement any logic here to show uh, stars there. That's what I got from select all from person, really. No need to implement this thing. It was automatic, so it's pretty cool. Uh, so you cannot accidentally show credit card numbers anywhere. That's data masking with max scale. 